guys welcome back to my channel today I want to work on few succulent projects it's been almost a year that I have given any update on my litops and mimicry plants uh, mimicry plants are not my favorite you know I really enjoy chrysoulas I love echeverias and of course I love some of the euphorbias and cacti and so my mimicry plants I'm gonna probably keep in one or two pots the most so I'm going to show you how they are doing after about a year now and also uh, work on new arrangement, mimicry plant arrangement. Uh, then I got a really good deal uh, of, from Lowe's that I wanted to show you and I'm really excited about two plants in that arrangement. And then I brought two plants that I took to conservatory for recovery. One of them has done really good, it's coming back to, you know, health. And the other one, I wasn't sure that it's doing that great over there, so I brought them back and I wanna, you know, replant them or take some cuttings, so, so let's start. So first, guys, I wanted to show you this uh, pot that I got uh, from Lowe's. The regular price of this really cute white pot was um, $12.98, which is $13. And um, it had uh, some uh, bugs flying around because I think the soil was too wet. There was some dry leaves. Uh, I'm hoping that there is no rot. Uh, but I was really interested to get it and it was very dirty. I'm gonna show you because um, I haven't done anything with it yet so you can see exactly how it arrived. So as you can see, it was like really dirty, like it, something fell on it. But I was really interested to get this one. This is a Chiveria Murani that I don't have yet. And I really like this Sediferia. It's like packed full. This other branch is not as full. It has a lot of lost leaves. As you can see, there is a lot of debris here. Um, this one was stretched and not doing the best. Um, and then this one was well was stretched and I don't I was not really interested in this one and the pot is really nice and it has um, a hole on the bottom so I asked if they could give me discount and I didn't expect it but they gave me uh, this for five dollars which I was super happy about because the pot itself is beautiful and just these two plants I mean like that's what I was interested in in and so you can see the bugs fungus nets when uh, it's too wet of a soil so hopefully I'm gonna get rid of them so the plan today is just kind of to pull them out clean them up so I'm gonna first pull out this beautiful echeveria that I'm so interested in okay so as you can see there is a lot of uh, dead leaves here uh, I don't know if it was overwatered um, it's possible. Hopefully it doesn't have root rot or stem rot. It's very dirty too. But it's a really interesting echeveria. It has like a green leaves and then um, maroon color edges. Um, so super excited about adding that to my echeveria collection. You see gnats <laughs> just flying around. I'm just gonna clean probably with the brush top and find the right pot for it. So I'm gonna put that on the side. Uh, this, as I said, I'm not really interested in it. It looks like a Greptocedum vera higgins that also lost a lot of um, leaves. So any color as well. Oops. Um, and then this one is, I think, healthy jade it just um, needs more light so I'm just gonna save it and um, take it to conservatory and then the last one here is this sedivaria and then you touch them you know they're so overwatered and that's usually the sign of overwatering when your leaves just come off easily uh, when plant is thirsty it, it holds on to its leaves it's like uh, you know, it's really hard to remove them. So that's why when you ship them, not to lose leaves, you have to dry up plants a little bit. All right, it's really pretty. I love it. But look at that compact look. Again, a lot of roots, so I'm gonna um, need to find a bigger pot for this one and then put it under lights. I'm trying to 
loosen oh, gently the soil. So really pretty pot. I can use it to place some other plants that I can display when we move. I was looking for more white and gray pots. Hopefully this size pot will work for this echeveria. I think it will. And I'm just adding some of my soil mix to fill up the holes here which is a coco brick, espuma, cactus soil mix, and perlite. I'm going to add just a little bit more soil because when I water, it's usually the level of the soil goes down a bit. But I'm not planning to water this one at all now because um, it has been overwatered and I think it just needs a break from watering. <laughs> Just gonna clean it well. Something must have fall, fell on top of this echeveria because it's like so full of dirt in between the leaves. As you can see, really pretty. Yeah. I'm planting this sedevaria in a pot of the same size pot. These leaves keep coming off. Maybe I'm gonna leave some on top to see if they're gonna propagate under lights. But <clears throat> definitely not gonna be watering these for a little while. You can see how it looks. It's not perfectly clean yet, so I'm going to probably do another round of cleaning this dirt in between the leaves because it's pretty bad. Okay, I'm going to put these on top that came off. So that's it. Next here I have um, my Kalanhoi plant. I forgot the exact uh, ID. It's like a variegated uh, one that gets like pink and white and blue. It's really pretty. And I think it got some kind of fungus and it kept losing leaves and it was almost ready to go to trash. And then I just took it to conservatory and these tips grew really well. And I think it's a little bit dehydrated there because these like to get watered more often. So I think I'm going to cut these tips that have full compact look. Look at how cute it is when, when the leaves are propagating. It, on the edges they will create new rosettes. It's adorable. So I'm going to do that and then maybe return the stems uh, to conservatory if I don't have space underneath my lights and see if they can grow too. I try to go every week and water but um, they were quite dry so so um, I think it to cut right here. There will still be some leaves left on this stem. one I'm gonna pull out because it's not very big so I can place it directly in the pot okay so this one's gonna go back and these cuttings I'm gonna now place in a new pot so I have a pot ready and I'm um, you know place a little bit of a rooting corman on the bottoms of the stem before I place them in the soil so I'm going to place these under LED pink lights. They have been before growing really well under LED lights, but this year it had a problem, like I said, with fungus. So you see how pretty it is? Okay. So here is my Huernia snideriana. It hasn't been doing terrible here at home under fluorescent lights. But I thought it's going to do better in conservatory because all stapelias that I took there did really well. However, I don't know if it's because it's plastic pots or because I, where I put them on the red shelves there was a lot of um, 
you know, dripping of the rain. But whenever I would come, they were like soaked wet. And that's really bad for them. So I was really concerned. And one of the, you know, one of the pots that I have was getting, um, oh my goodness, root mealy bugs, I think. Mm. Here. You see this white, guys? This is not perlite. It's like fuzzy and stretchy. This is a root mealy bugs. So, uh, but it's all also wet, wet, wet. Um, I think I'm gonna have to completely change the soil mix uh, for these ones. And hopefully I save them. There is a lot of healthy parts, and there is not um, there is not a lot of root mealy bugs, from what I see. So I think um, good spraying and um, changing the soil completely, which is going to be a lot of work. Separating whatever it's healthy. This one here is got to rot, so that one's going to go to trash. But most of them are doing great. This one was very prolific, uh, Huernia for me, and did really well. Bloomed a ton. I have, you know, given cuttings or sold cuttings that this did really well. So this one did have a rot, but it kind of fell off, separated itself from rot, and this cutting is pretty good. So I'm gonna let it root. So there is a lot of them that don't have uh, a lot of roots. Look at that. Mealybugs. I think after this project, I'm going to have to throw away this whole paper because I don't want to place any other pots or plants on it. So, to be safe. Overall, this is not bad. I have seen it worse in the fall. You remember, guys, when I was making video about all those Stapelius and Huernius I lost due to root mealybugs. There was much more infestation than here. Uh, but this also now tells me that probably all the other pots that I have there, I better check out again. So, all right. I'm gonna probably wash all these and then um, spray with alcohol, completely replace the soil. That's the plan. I changed the paper, threw away all the soil, disinfected the pot, and even the tag. <laughs> and these were washed thoroughly. And then I uh, spray them with alcohol well, the roots and the tops, 70% alcohol. So I'm going to let them look, dry a little bit and rest a little bit. And then I'm going to prepare neem oil. And probably tomorrow morning I'm going to spray them with neem oil. And uh, of course, new soil. I'm very hopeful about this one because there was a lot of this plant that was not attacked. And I think it's going to be all right. So here are my lit ups and mimicry plans, guys. Okay, so this is my pot with Lapidary Margaret. This um, type of lit up mimicry plant was probably the easiest for me. Um, you can obviously see when they're thirsty, they wrinkle like this, and then you, they need more water. And they have been really nice and easy to take care of. So no problems there. I think when I went to Serbia six months ago, I had two that dried up. They were very little. So um, they do need their water. All right, this was my pot where I placed all of the little succulents that I had in individual white pots. And um, as you can see, a lot of them is missing that were here, especially green and yellow green color ones. Um, some of them did dry up that were very small. I think they needed more water. 
but I also had a number of attacks on this pot and this big pot. So I discovered that chipmunks and mouse, mouses love lit tops. And um, when they were in the greenhouse outside, I would find them pull out of the ground, munched on. So that was the first attack when a few of the succulents were lost. And my second attack, which is gonna also be my tip for you guys, it was end of the fall. And the biggest pots that I have, like with cactuses and agaves, I waited to get inside the latest, kind of like over there, the big, big pots. And um, I didn't know that mouses can get in the big pots, you know, because uh, they're trying to find a place that it's warm and spend the winter. So <laughs> I got the mouse by uh, getting the big pot inside the house. And I found that out because as soon as I got the big pot in the plant room, the lit tops from this pot were pulled out, the green ones, which were my favorite. I love green color lit tops like uh, Leslie of, of Minica, and they were munched on. So um, we got rid of the mouse really quickly because the vents were closed in this room because it always gets really hot because of the lights so that was kind of easy fix but that's just something to be cautious about if you're getting your plants in in the fall there you may have some animals planted you know or the even the stink bugs buried themselves in the soil all right so that's how i lost some of these guys the, the ones that i have are doing great a lot of them split dried up leaves and some of them are a little bit too dry i think that they need more water um this pot, uh, if you remember my arrangement, that had split rocks, they have dried up. When I, six, seven months ago, when I went to Serbia, I came back and one of the lit tops was completely dried up, like brown. No water, and so um, didn't make it. I followed the rules during the winter time, didn't water these guys, and they started drying up, so I lost a lot of them here. Split rocks, and even this one is completely dried up as you can see so I started watering these guys so they do, they don't die because I really love this tenopsis so obviously this pot needs rearranging I was even thinking just getting these all in here but I think it's gonna be a little too crowded for them so I got some new ones that are really cute that just arrived to Lowe's and I want to add them in this arrangement so let me show you how cute these guys are so last year I had two of these two, they dried up, and this one is cute too. So I thought that that would be uh, colors that would go nicely here. This is petrified food that I love to use as decoration, it's just so pretty. So what I'm thinking to do is just to pull out this one that's almost dried up, because it does not look good. And this one looks good, this one looks so so i think it still has life in it um, i do like shape of that one so i don't think i'm gonna throw it away so i'm gonna place these guys again in this corner where they were last time I'm gonna add some more pumice on top here when I'm done. Here in this corner I can place these. Wow, this one doesn't wanna come out. It's like really packed full of roots. Just gonna lightly loosen up
it looks already much better. Um, place these stones. I mean the petrified wood. So here it is how it looks like, guys. I did water this one and decided to leave it because it does have still healthy parts, and I did water this one as well. Um, these gonna be rooting. These are planted, going under lights, looking pretty. So just wanted to show you what I did with some of my uh, colorful uh, lit tops uh, that were in the white pots. Um, I have this pot from a uh, garage sale that I paid only a dollar, and I love love how it's made. It's really a, it's a piece of art. I have seen it on art show, and it was much more expensive. So. Uh, I didn't buy it at the time and um, I actually put all the same soil that they had which is pumice with a little bit of a cactus soil mix but on top I uh, added turfis because um, it looks prettier with this color of the pot and then I had some stones that I um, that were kind of blending well so I added those as well so you can see I'm pretty happy with how it looks I hope they're gonna be okay here. Oops, I see a little bug there. Um, then um, I checked the roots for lapidary margaret and they were not very big so I ended up putting them in this one smaller pot as you can see with a little carved stone and polished stone that's shaped like a fish. And then I used this pot that I found um, for five dollars with all the plants in it and I put my syngonium in there that I had in the kitchen facing actually northeast corner with very little light so it has been quite neglected so hope, I hope I can find a better spot for it looks pretty in this spot. I ended up uh, spraying this with neem oil and putting it in a clean new soil so I was keeping it in front of the fan and tomorrow I'm gonna put it in under lights. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something new. Uh, I will see you soon in the next video.